Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Stacey. If anybody is new into the regulars, welcome back. So it's come to my attention that people like me saying my slogan, so I'm just going to say it here. My slogan is Believable Brown Beauty and I like to use makeup in weird and wonderful ways. So yeah, um, that's what my channel's all about. Today's video is going to be a chatty get ready with me um, because, oh, I'm just going to slip this right one in here. If you don't already follow me on my Instagram, I'm going to leave my handle for you here. I do live get ready with me on Sunday mornings at 9.30 GMT. And yeah, if you fancy hanging out, come along. So what I was going to say before I remembered that is that um, on my Instagram a little while ago, I was doing a live when I was doing some makeup, not a live, a story, an IG story. And I was doing some makeup shopping and I went on a little bit of a rant about Charlotte Tilbury and why I don't love the brand. So I got lots and lots of messages, lots of DMs from people, even on like on my last video, someone put a message about Charlotte Tilbury and how they're treated when they go in there. And I just wanted to explain my bone of contention with Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm going to be doing my makeup and talking about that. And the palette I'm using again today, if you haven't watched my last video, I'm going to leave a link for you. I don't know if it's up here or up here, but you know that white box. But I am going to be revisiting the Bobbi Brown Smoky Crystal palette and doing a different look. So yeah, let's get into it. First, I'm starting off with brows. I've brushed this one up already, but I, know I fluffed my lines. So I'm going to say it again. I'm using my Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. So I'm just going to brush up Struggalina and then my good eyebrow. So I went to Charlotte Tilbury and I was looking around in the store at products and I'm just going to put this disclaimer here I don't know Charlotte Tilbury I'm just talking about the brand and what I see when I shop there so um, I'm going to move on to concealer this is going to be tricky for me to, to do to talk and to do this but I'm using my NARS radiant creamy concealer in Amand so um, I went shopping in Westfield I went to the Charlotte Tilbury store and I was looking around and I was just like oh this is not really a shop where as a black woman I feel comfortable shopping because a lot of the products that are in here aren't geared towards my complexion. Maybe you know what I'm gonna do for this video just so I don't break continuity I'm just gonna put the products across the screen so I can just keep talking. So um, I'm not the kind of person that feels like every makeup brand has to be catered to women of colour and that might be I don't know I might get a lot of comments about that but I, I just don't because um, if I can find what I'm looking for then that's cool and generally I can like it's it's always harder being a black woman to be able to like go anywhere and find foundation or concealer or like skin products but generally on the whole it's not impossible if you if you live in the UK so my regulars my go-to's are like NARS and Bobbi Brown I kind of um Get, and MAC, I get everything that I need from there, so that's not my problem. My issue with Charlotte Tilbury is the fact that from the outside looking in, it looks like it's a, um, what do they call it? Like an inclusive brand. It looks like you can get makeup for everybody in there. But when you actually go in and look, you can't really. And it's like, okay, so some places I know, like I wouldn't, particularly go to Huda Beauty to try and get a foundation. I don't think the type of foundation they do and the way I like my skin to look doesn't really align, but for colour products, fine. You know, I can get an eyeshadow palette from there. I've seen other girls demo it that are my complexion or deeper and use one palette and get everything I need for my skin. But when I went in there, I was looking at the palettes and I was like, they don't really have any deep colours. And then I went over to the lipsticks and there wasn't really a dark brown or a deep brown. And as a black woman, a dark brown, like chocolate brown lip pencil was kind of a basic product to have. They didn't have that. And I was looking at the foundation shades and I was just like, oh, okay, well, they have some darker foundations. And I'm not particularly dark. I wouldn't classify myself as dark skin. I'm not fair either. I think I'm just like the average brown, average color brown black woman. And I was just thinking, but for the price point, like I don't expect to come to a brand like this and have to mix my products. They're not cheap. I'm gonna pause here and go and find out how much a foundation is, one sec. Okay, so the foundation is 32 pounds. 
I'm not going to spend £32 twice to mix my colour when I can go to Bobbi Brown or NARS or Lancome or lots of other different brands and buy my exact foundation for less money than that. And I'm going to move on because I've been blending this concealer for ages. Um, I feel like... Don't pretend. <laughs> Basically, that's what I need to say. Like, don't pretend to be inclusive. I can handle if you're not. What I don't like is being kind of like sold a lie. So when you go in there, you think as a black woman, like, oh yeah, I can get my stuff in here. But then as you start to look, it's actually really difficult to buy products that don't require a lot of effort. And if I'm spending that kind of money, I don't want to spend a lot of effort. That's the whole reason why you pay more is so that it's easier. Like, okay, if I want to mix products, then I'll go to LA Girl and mix my products from there. But if I want something to work out of the bottle, I'm going to go to MAC or Bobbi Brown or NARS or any of the other brands that I've mentioned and just get my product straight from there. So I don't know, it kind of annoyed me that in kind of every area, like complexion and colour, there wasn't the depth needed for women of colour to be able to easily shop there. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but it wouldn't be easy. And it kind of annoyed me that the model, it's like when you go in there, all the, I think they're called looks, look in a box or whatever, but um, she has all these curated looks and you just buy the kit to create that look, but all the models are white. But then at Christmas, you have a black girl as like one of your models. And I'm just thinking, well, what products did they use on her from here to create that look? They probably didn't really put much on their skin. They picked someone with perfect skin that doesn't need foundation. Or, and I'm not saying they, they did this, so I don't want to get done for slander or anything. But I have been on shoots for products. Or I have worked in TV programs where they've been sponsored by a brand. And they just tell us to use our regular kit and put that stuff out to make it look like we're using their stuff. I know it happens and I'm not saying that they did that I don't want to get done for slander but I would love for a girl that complexion to walk in and easily buy everything that she needs there and I'm tired of just seeing like a wash of gold eyeshadow on a black girl and a deep berry lip or a red lip and that's our look like we can do more than that this is 2018 like it should be easier and like I said before, I don't expect all brands to cater to all people. Like, that's like expecting every shop to go from a size zero to a triple XL and for every shop to do every shoe. Like, I'm not saying that. But what frustrates me is when a brand pretends and purports to be inclusive. But when you actually peel the layers back and look, especially as an artist, I'm just like, nah, this is not fair. So that's my real problem with Charlotte Tilbury. And it's like the blushes weren't that easy and even if you could use them it would take a lot of work the lip products I tried on a pillow talk lipstick and if you have got light colored lips perfect but if you're like me and you have brown lips and you put that color on it's beautiful but it sits in the lines and it separates and I was just like oh this is too much work so yeah that's pretty much it um now I have got that out of the way I can just go back to doing my makeup as normal but this is the Bobbi Brown stick foundation in chestnut number nine i have just taken it on a real techniques brush which is a buffing brush and just work this into my jawline for a little bit of color down there so that's that i'm just taking my nars radiant creamy concealer again in amand and just putting a tiny bit underneath my brows i do not like super carved brows i used to but my taste has changed and i prefer a much and actually, when I say I used to, they were never like Instagram brows because that's just another level to me. But I just prefer them to be a bit softer and a little bit more organic. So I'm just doing this because I get a bit of discoloration between my brow and my lid. And this helps to neutralise it a little bit. Then I'm taking the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. And I'm just going to fill in the gaps. I don't like my brows to look solid whatsoever. So I just fill in some of the gaps, but a real hair brow will have gaps, it won't be solid, so I don't ever make them solid, as you can see. Then I just take the spoolie on this brow pencil and just break everything up a little bit. Okay, and today I'm using my 24 hour extended eye base from MAC. I really love this product for... Um, Making eyeshadows really easy to blend and making them last ages on your eyelid. So the reason why I'm doing this today is because I'm going to be using a lot of lip products around my eyes. 
that have the potential to stain and may be really creamy and this will just help them lock in place a bit better. Um, I find with this product you really have to blend it on like the whole of the lid and a little bit goes a long way so don't use too much. So whilst that's setting I'm going to go back to my skin. It's a real skin day today and I'm going to take my Danessa Myricks Illuminating Veil in Attraction and I'm taking a little bit because I always get overexcited with this and then I never use it so I've literally got that much on the back of my hand and I'm using a 132 brush from MAC and I'm just going to start building up my highlight and I really like to push my highlight into the skin so it doesn't look like it's just sitting on top and then a tiny bit in the middle of my nose on the bridge of my nose and then to amp up even more I'm taking my Tom Ford shade and illuminate palette in intensity 2 and I'm just using the cream highlighter from that you can see it just creates a really beautiful glow on the skin which I am here for 24 7 just have to make sure you buff everything in so it's all creamy and like melts into the skin. Now I'm going to move on to eyes and I really want to do a pink eye and red lip. I'm not sure what pink product to use on my eyes. Oh, did I put it here? Wait a minute. Okay, so um, I'm going to take my Bobbi Brown Vibrant Violet Lipstick and I'm going to use this as an eyeshadow. So I'm just popping it on my lid first. And then I need to get a smaller mirror, like always. And I'm just going to start blending this out. I quite like the idea of using this one because it's a matte lipstick. So it's not going to be overly creamy. So it should stay in place. So I've just done the top of this eye. The tops of... <laughs> I've just done the lids on both my eyes. I'm now taking the same colour. And I'm going to run it underneath as well. So I'm going to take the tip of the lipstick and then look up and just run it underneath. So when I was blending on my other eye, I was thinking of all the things I didn't say. So um, in regards to the whole Charlotte Tilbury thing, I had so many women that were messaging me saying like they don't feel like their brand is inclusive and it's really disappointing that they have been treated really badly when they've gone in there, they just get ignored by staff and this isn't Charlotte's fault, this can happen to any brand. But um, I just feel it's quite telling that so many women ask me to speak on this issue because there are so many like influencers and YouTubers that love Charlotte Tilbury and I'm not saying if you love it you shouldn't. I have to put so many disclaimers in this video because it can just get so easily misconstrued. But I find that sometimes when a brand is really popular, like people don't really want to be the one to say anything negative about it. And I remember I got a comment from somebody and they were saying to me like, oh, um, they had purchased some products from Beauty Pie and they were disappointed in the, the shade range. And oh, was I not disappointed in the shade range with Beauty Pie? And my honest answer is no. My issue with um, Charlotte Tilbury is that it's a high street store, you know, this is somewhere that you can walk into Selfridges, you can walk into in Westfield, there's a physical store there. They have staff who put makeup on people, there are makeup artists that work in the store and they try products on their prospective customers. So Beauty Pie, if you don't know, is an online brand who um, have a subscription and you pay a membership fee each month, I think, and then you get luxury makeup um, at a discounted rate. I don't mind so much brands like that that don't have as much uh, colour range because how would I know ordering online that this is definitely going to be my colour? It's always kind of hit and miss when you order makeup online and there's only an online shop. There isn't a physical beauty pie store. The reason why I'm annoyed with Charlotte Tilbury is that this is a relatively new brand and in all the stuff that's been happening with inclusivity, you would have just thought that they would have made more of an effort, but they haven't. They're a high street store and then they pretend to be inclusive and it just gets on my nerves. So yeah, now I can go back to doing my eyeshadow because I remembered that I needed to say that. So I'm going to try this out. I haven't tested this makeup. Do some people do that? Like they do a test run before they film? I just film and see what happens. I'm going to go back to my Bobbi Brown Smoky Crystal palette, which I'm really annoyed that the black one is completely shattered. But there is a colour in there 
called Sugar Plum. I'm going to see if I can hold this up and show you without getting the shadow all over my white floors. But it is this colour here. Yeah, it's got a slightly red tone to it, so I'm going to use that over this pink. Will it show up pink or will it show up black? Who knows? Right, so I'm taking a little blending brush. Oh my goodness. No, I think because of the pink underneath, it definitely shows up pink and glittery. Oh wow, I wasn't expecting that. Right, so now I'm going to really blend this up so that we have no demarcation lines. Ooh, this is pretty. I like this. Okay, so then I'm going to take Pink Bubbly. I'm not going to show you the palette anymore because the black one keeps tipping all over the place and it's frustrating me a little bit. Um, I'm going to take some of the Pink Bubbly colour and then just pop that in the centre. Then I'm going to take a smaller brush and mirror the exact same thing underneath. And I'm going to take... Yeah, the same colour, that pink bubbly, and just use it as a highlight in the inner corner as well. I want to make my eyes look quite narrow and long, so I'm going to avoid putting any or too much liner in the middle of my eye, because that always makes my eyes look way more open and round, and see what I can come up with. So I'm just taking a Real Techniques liner brush, and oh, let's make, that, make sure that's nice and smooth on the brush first. Oh, and turn this upside down. Yeah, if you have those gel liners in a glass pot, always keep them upturned when you are working. Look at that line. Look at that. That is perf. And then I'm going to connect that in. Then I'm going to do a really skinny liner just at the root of my lash. Oh, I'm happy how that turned out, and that's my bad eye to do, so hopefully. This second I should be a walk in the park. Right, let's get this angle right. What the hell is that noise? Okay. Oh my god, I thought something was going to explode in my house. It's Amanda's car toy. Right, let's go back. And then I'm just tight lining with the gel. Inside my hat, and I think I'm going to do my waterline as well. We always know that I do my waterline, I don't know why I act like I'm going to be surprised. I'm just using the gel instead of a pencil today. I really like that. I know usually I like them, I like my liner quite smoky, but sometimes it can be fun. I think because I've got quite a graphic liner, where I not quite, it is a graphic liner, it's nice to have that really sharp line inside. It really pinches and pulls the eye. Mmm, cool. You know when you forget to press record, I went through this whole spiel explaining what I was doing on this eye. But thank God I got two eyes, so I'm going to do it again on the other side. So, what I was saying is, I went out for dinner with my friends yesterday, and um, I just was playing with my makeup, and I had a really, like, simple, really simple, but really fun look on. And one thing I did was put mascara only in the corner of my eye. So I'm recreating that today, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. So I'm taking my extended play mascara and I'm really, really concentrating that on the outer lashes, pulling it all the way from the root, all the way to the top of the lash. But then the inner part of my eye, I'm just literally placing my brush at the root and just wiggling and not pulling up at all. So I have done my um, extended play and I'm going to go over them 
just the outside corner with my I love that sound um, of with my uh, in extreme dimension 3d black lash so I'm taking Ruby Roo lipstick an oldie but a goodie And then I'm taking a, gosh, who's this pencil by? Paris Berlin. Yeah, Paris Berlin lip pencil in 212. And just creating a bit of depth in the corner of my lip. I don't know if it's dark enough on the edge. So I have something else here that I'm going to do. We'll see how that works. I'm going to try something. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. So if it doesn't, mm, there's makeup. That's what happens. But give me one sec. So basically, I want the edges of my lip to be darker. So I am taking a retro matte liquid lipstick from MAC. And this colour is High Drama. And I'm going to take this brush. It's a little liner brush from Bedellium Tools. And I'm going to create a bit more drama. I also want it to be softer. So I'm taking another little brush and just blurring the top edge. So I'm keeping it like just within my lip line and then blending it to the edge. And with this product, you kind of have to do it in stages because it dries really quickly. It's not like a cream lipstick where you can just keep going and going. Then I'm taking a paper cotton bud from Muji. And I'm just going to soften it even more. It's actually easy with a cotton bud, so maybe just do that instead. But not a plastic one. I don't get why people still buy cotton buds that, are, that have plastic tubes. But anyway, I don't want to get too preachy on here. <laughs> if that's what you've got, use what you've got. Right, so now the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some lipstick. And I want to bring these two colours together that I have on my eye and my lips. I'm going to mix them both on my cheeks. I'm literally going to do a dot of Vibrant Violet, which is the Bobbi Brown, and then a dot of Ruby Woo. Then I'm taking the brush that I used to put on my highlighter and I'm really going to work this in. Because with this much colour on your face, you really can't afford to have a lot of stuff going on in your cheeks. But I find that if you leave it completely bare, it also looks really odd. So you have to find like a really sheer wash of the colour. So I'm just tapping out my, um, my highlight here. Willida Skin Food. My friend Lois talks about this all the time. And my skin is really dry. It's so weird. Someone asked me the other day, like, oh, what do you do for dry skin in the winter? And I was like, oh, I don't really get dry skin. And now I have dry skin. So <laughs> I'm going to use this. I've used it on my face today underneath my makeup. And I'm just going to use some of it over the top. So I'm really working it into my hand because it looks quite white when it goes on, but then I've got it to this kind of sheen. And I'm just going to use it to tap it over. My highlight here and make that even more dewy. Now, I can't afford to do this all over. If you're fairer skinned, you can kind of get away with putting shiny products everywhere on your face and it doesn't look greasy as quickly. But for me, I have to be very careful <laughs> about how I do that. Which is why, if you notice, I didn't put any highlight on my forehead because it's very highlighted already. Not that I'm complaining because it's what makes me me, but I know my face and it doesn't need any product there. So now my last thing to do is I'm going to set everything. So I am taking this Bobbi Brown, I think it's an eyeshadow brush, yeah, an eye blender brush. And I'm using my Cover FX Matte Setting Powder in Deep. And I'm going to strategically mattify my face because I don't want to lose all this sheen and glow. So I'm going to use a tiny bit here where my skin is much more pory. 
And then I'm gonna just tone it down on my chin. Not a hard set like the side of my nose, but just take it down. The end of my nose, I don't like shiny, so I'm gonna kill that off. Then I'm taking my Danessa Myricks powder. Um, I think this was, what number was this? Yeah, number five. It's a really warm red toned powder and I'm going to use it to kind of subtly contour my face. So I'm sticking with the same brush. I'm just going through the hollow of my cheek. A little bit goes a long way so I'm literally just working from the cap. If this is a power look right, you need to have cheekbones with this kind of makeup. Or emphasise them anyway. Um, and then I'm going to do my forehead as well. If anyone's new, I didn't forget to put foundation on my forehead. I just don't like it. So I only ever just use powder on my forehead. And I like this because it adds a bit of warmth to the makeup. And then the final thing I'm going to do is set my under eyes. I'm just taking my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish. Tap, tap, tap in dark. And just pressing it underneath my eye. Now, I used to do this all the time, and I'm reverting back to doing this because I feel like my eye bags are way more prominent at the moment. And this has got a really lovely soft focus finish to it. So I'm just using it to set my concealer in here. And then where it meets my highlight, I can see on both sides, it's like a big jump. I don't know if I'm turning my head, if you can see that, it's like matte, 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 matte shine. And the same on this side. So I'm literally gonna use my finger, my ring finger, and just pat the join. This is my final makeup look for today. This is a very, very bold, um, colourful, holiday kind of makeup. If you are not into colour, this probably isn't for you, but I just like the fact that I have got a really strong eye, like my other video, really strong eye, really strong lip, but everything else is really soft, like the skin is really believable, the highlight is really glossy and balmy, my brows are really soft, so I feel like when you take some elements out and keep them soft you can wear much stronger things that ordinarily you probably couldn't um yeah it was a really lovely video for me to do i kind of i like it i like this pink and red clash i think it looks really pretty um please let me know your thoughts on charlotte tilbury and if you agree or if you don't agree, I'd love to like hear what you guys have to say. Um, let me know if there are any other videos you'd like me to do. Please leave me suggestions and just leave me a comment. I like reading them and replying them. Um, I think that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Bye.